With windy conditions, scoring opportunities were at a premium. Yet the day still saw the tar charge from the chase card. Ricky had his best day, but it was too little too late. And many were asking, does anyone on lead card want to win? It's Swiss with the Disc Golf World, and you guys already know the one with all the holes in his games. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and for all those who came up to me on the course. But let's get into all the action at the Throw Pink Women's Championship and the United States Disc Golf Championship at Winthrop Gold in South Carolina. With wind gust and OB all over the course, many found it difficult to score, as the day would be the slowest scoring round of the weekend. However, Ricky didn't get the memo as he had his best round of the weekend with a 10 under. Ricky scored 9 birdies and added an eagle on 10 also, and only saw a single blemish, a bogey on hole 17. The day moved him up 43 spots, tied for 9th with Calvin Heinberg, who put together the next best round with a 7 under. Yeah, it was just one of those days of scoring. And as excitable as these two names climbing into the top 10 is, the odds of them taking down the championship are nearly impossible. Not only would they need to put together double digit unders, but everyone above them would need to shoot near even or worse the best case possible here is looking at a podium at best as for lead card only two would finish below par and with the rest of the field also having mediocre scores a four under allowed kyle klein to top the leaderboard separation from the remainder of the pack and had he not had three bogeys on the last five holes he could have had an even larger lead than the three strokes that he ended with klein looked in control was putting well and put together just enough to take a firm grasp on this tournament and i don't see a chance of klein not winning this event he knows what it takes to close out on the final day as he had front row seats at it at 2021's usdgc i don't see bradley williams pushing him enough the kg vet had the fewest bogeys on lead card in the worst conditions today but i don't see him stacking birdies on enough holes to hang with kyle on most days on this track let alone the final day of a major and it's certainly not from joel freeman either who does have the ability to put the best round together yet joel is just as likely to completely joel freeman the situation joel who started the day with a stroke lead came out to the slowest start of the final card he was two over on the front nine, and even beginning the back nine with an eagle and two more birdies on the next three holes, Joe looked to close out the round strong. Only to triple bogey the next hole, followed with a bogey right after that due to him missing a 14-foot putt. And even though he added a birdie after, he still would bogey the final hole and finish the day two over, which leaves him five strokes behind Klein heading into the final day. Sully Tipton's underdog shine faded slightly after an up-and-down round where he threw five birdies along with adding five bogeys, finishing even on the round and tied with Joel. I'm looking for Sully to attack this course tomorrow and push for a podium finish, and the fact that it would be his largest payday certainly wouldn't hurt either. His forehand is the strongest of those on the lead card, and if he's aggressive enough in the right spots, he could land in a top three spot at a major for the young player. At the Throw Pink event, it saw the best in the game, Kristen Tatar tried to chase down the course record and climb back atop the leaderboard. She started the front 9-4 under, only to go 6 under on the first 7 holes of the back, and headed into 18, looking to tie Evelina Sullivan's 11 under. Unfortunately, she would only par and finish the round 10 under with no bogeys during difficult conditions. Tatar just looked like classic Tatar and is now tied with Evelina and two strokes better than the rest of the field heading into the final round. And everyone is expecting her to run away with this. And with Evelina's putting woes, it's no wonder that everyone believes Tatar is going to win. Her putting cost her a solo lead. She was only 29% from C1X. And even if you want to call that a bad spit out, she had a costly band hit right after that. Yet, if Evelina can keep it close heading into 18, she just might have a chance as Tatar is yet to be able to crack that hole. And she often finds OB on her second shot. But let's get real. Tatar has this in hand before they hit the back nine. Evelina was still able to put a five down despite that putting and does seem to be the happiest on the course she's been all season. Her putt does have more conviction than the past also, but she needed to go into the final day with at least a three-stroke lead for her to have a chance to win this event. Ella Hansen was able to climb a couple positions with her play and a six under moving her into third place and only two strokes off the lead. Ella scores in bunches and today was no different going seven under through nine holes at one point. Ella will need to focus on scoring, not only to push for a win, but to keep Holland Hanley and Hannah Blumrose off the podium. And now we get to check in with this weekend's media darling, Eliezra Midling, who displayed her potential yet again with eight birdies on the day. Yet her inexperience did show through, with three double bogeys and another bogey finishing the day one under. And look, this final round isn't the time to learn a lesson. She needs to leave nothing on the table and push to score on the final day. And guys, that wraps up day three recap. Make sure you guys check out the weekend wrap up for not only the final day, but even more of the weekend action. And if you enjoyed, be on the lookout for daily recaps of the DGBT championships.